everybody. This is D Hunter for another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at McFarlane's DC Direct, the new Batman Adventures Batgirl. This is part of the newest wave of McFarlane's DC Direct animated stuff. This is a new Batman Adventures wave. And it's disappointing to me, this is not a collective build a figure thing. It has sort of art from the episode, which is cool and all, but I'd much rather be collective build a figure. Of course, that does make the figures a little cheaper. The collective build are $30, these ones are $25. I pre ordered this from the McFarland Toy Store. I utilized the bundle discount and the coupon code and got them for less than retail with shipping and taxes included. So let's take a look. Start at the top here McFarland Toys, Batgirl, ages 12 plus. The new Batman Adventures, which is season four of Batman the Emmy series. Here she is in the package. Looks like we have a total of 10 hands, two Batarangs, a grapnel launcher and then a display stand and some art from the episode. One side of the package, Batgirl posed up. Other side just says Batgirl. At the back, here she is standing. And at the bottom, there's her barcode, if that helps anybody. The collective build figures are Target exclusive. These are not, they should be available everywhere. Amazon, Big Bad Toy Store, McFarland Toy Store, etc. So with no further ado, let's open her up. And of course, I did get two of these figures. One of which to open and enjoy, the other one to keep unopened in my complete Batman and related unopened action figure collection. And I went ahead and went through my old boxes and found the original release of the DC Direct, the new Batman Adventures Batgirl. It looks like there are minimal to no differences, but we'll take a look at that in the entire video. I also wanted to mention there is a Platinum Chase variant of this Batgirl. If anyone out there has a lead on where I might be able to get one, or two, I'd be very interested. Drop me a line in the comments below. So here's this entire wave. Like I said, I got it from the McFarland Toy Store, and there are minimal differences from the original releases, which is disappointing to somebody who's been all in since the beginning of this line. And here are the original releases by DC Direct of these four figures. Nice re-release for those who missed them. And as you guys are aware, I got two of these bundles. Now I checked my order history at the McFarland Toy Store, and even after shipping and taxes, they came out to $21 per figure. Not a bad deal. And here's my entire collection of DC Direct Batman the Animated Series figures. I have them all unopened, and it looks like we have four more to add to the collection. All right, now that this figure out of the package, here she is with all of her accessories laid out. She comes with a display stand, an animation cell reproduction, eight alternate hands, totally 10 interchangeable hands, and then two batarangs, and the grapnel launcher. But before we take a look at all that, let's talk about and check out the figure. So this is Batgirl. Her real name is Barbara Gordon, Commissioner Gordon's daughter, and she became a member of the Bat family in the fourth season of Batman the Animated Series. Yes, she made a couple of appearances before, but she was officially invited to join the Bat family in season four, the new Batman Adventures. She wore a black costume, and I thought it was pretty cool. Expanding the Bat family, we have Nightwing, Batgirl, Robin, Batman, team finally coming together. Now, I have the original figure from about 10 years ago, and I'm not a fan. Her legs are so small, the figure is very brittle. Hopefully, this one will be a little better. So let's take a look. Start with her face here. It looks good. She's smiling. She has black around the eyes. It's sort of like a domino mask. I don't know, that gap above with the skin color is kind of weird looking. She has a little bit of red on her lips. Nice little touch. Of course, the signature red hair from Babs. Black outfit, yellow gloves, yellow bat symbol, yellow belt, yellow boots, yellow on the inside of the cape, blue on the outside of the cape. As a whole, she looks good, but man, the figure is just so freaking tiny. Not a fan of just how small she is. I'm not a fan of the overall 6-inch scale of these figures. I wish they were 7-inch scale like most of the other DC Direct stuff, but this one here is super, super little, and it's always bothered me. In addition to that, mine seems to have something wrong with the legs. One leg seems longer than the other, and that seems to be her right leg. I have to sort of bend her knee to get him to stand properly, and then I was kind of trying to figure out why, and looking at her sort of crotch area, it's like it's missing a little piece of plastic here. I don't know. My old one doesn't have that problem, so I think it's just sort of a defect in this figure, and that kind of sucks. She's already hard enough to stand with these little ass feet, and adding this to the mix, that leg is definitely further down than the other one. So it looks like I picked the wrong of my two Batgirls to open. And a closer look at her face and head sculpt, 
It looks good. It captures a look of Batgirl and Barbara from Batman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures. I like the little bit of red on the lips. It looks good. I also like the red hair coming on the back. I guess the mask is accurate to the show, but I never really noticed that. It just looks kind of weird like this with that big flesh gap above her eyes or domino mask. Now her head is just so oddly proportioned to the rest of her body. It is gigantic. Not really a fan of this design. It just doesn't look right to me. And in plastic, it looks even worse than on screen. And then here's the figure, broken down as far as she can go, with all of her removable parts detached. Now let's check out her accessories. And let's start off with the display stand. It comes in three separate pieces. When put together, it's going to look like this. We have the large base that says the New Bound Adventures, then a post that goes to the top, and then it has a clamp to hold your figure. Now, I'm not much of a display stand guy. I like my figures to stand freely, but with figures with feet as small as back roller or Two-Face, display stand can really help. Now let's look at her animation cell. As you can see, it's an image of Batgirl from the new Batman Adventures. On the back side, the new Batman Adventures animation cell reproduction. This is from Love is a Croc, Season 1, Episode 13. And there are some other details. It has a little sort of triangle shape here you can punch out. And then you can display this thing like a picture frame. Now let's look at her hands. She has a total of 10 of them. Four right hands and six left hands. Here she is with her first pair of hands. These are her fists. Then with her second pair of hands, this is a pair of gripping hands. Here she is with her third pair of hands. This is another pair of gripping hands with a different shaped grip. And with her fourth pair of hands, this is a pair of default hands. They were like good, relaxed at her sides. And she still has two more left hands. This is another gripping hand with a very small grip for her batarang. And here's her final left hand. This one has a grapnel launcher permanently attached. Now it's like her batarangs. She has two of them. One kind of large and one very small and thin. I imagine the large one was supposed to be for a Batman figure. It looks like the batarang that came with the Batman the Animated Series Batman. And then her smaller batarang looks similar to the batarang that came with the new Batman Adventures Batman. Here she is, holding the larger of the two batarangs. Which is way too oversized for her. And here she is with the smaller batarang, which proportionately looks a lot better with her. Then we have the Grapnel Launcher, and I don't even know why they would give you this. It's like half the Grapnel Launcher, the top half, and you don't have anything for it to hold on to or for it to connect to, so what is the point of even having this at all? But she does have this hand with the Grapnel Launcher permanently attached, and it's cast in a yellow color, which is just dumb. I don't know why they would even give you the other Grapnel Launcher, it's so weird. I'm not a fan of hands with accessories permanently attached to them. I like to have my accessories to be able to add to the bat armory, to go in and out of their hands. But this is, I guess, the second best thing. We have the separate accessory, which I can put my armory, and then we have this one to sort of simulate holding it, even though it's done in yellow to match your gloves, which is just so dumb. And it was the same way in the original, yellow as well. I mean, you can see how the one that's permanently attached to your hand is a little bit more. It has something for it to hold on to, not just the top part. So why the hell do they give you just the top part separately? Uh, DC Direct, McFarlane, come on. Now to check out the differences between the McFarlane re-release, which is on the left, and the original, which is on the right. Now I've never been a fan of this figure. She's just so small, her limbs are so tiny, so brittle, her head is so big, her proportions are weird, her articulation's horrible. Some of the figures in this line, like Batgirl, and really both versions of Robin, Dick or Tim, they're just so tiny and brittle, and their articulation's bad. Never been a fan. On my original version, her leg broke and I had to glue the knee and I even dripped some glue all over it and it looks hideous. So, let's see if the new one is better. Now this one has a little bit more red skin tone, this one a little bit sort of paler. I'm not sure which one I like better. They both look good for different reasons. I feel like she looked a little bit more like this in the show, but I could be wrong. Go further down, it's really the same thing. Black, yellow. I mean, the McFarlane yellow is going to be a tad brighter, but it doesn't really matter. They're just so damned little. I don't like it. And then speaking of how little she is, from bottom to the top of her head, standing at 5 inches tall, which can translate to under 13 centimeters. If you go to the top of the ears, 5.2 inches tall. She is very, very little. And I get... She's sort of a teenager and a younger person in the show, but 
as a figure, it just doesn't translate well. And now to look at her articulation. So starting with her head, that giant head, she can rotate from side to side, and the hair gets over the shoulder a pretty good amount. Can't really look forward or back just because the hair is completely stuck on there. Can't really tilt either, so you can rotate around a tiny bit. Shoulders on a ball joint goes up about 90 degrees. Up, down, around, nothing bad there. The elbow only goes in this much. That sucks. Less than 90 degrees. It does have rotation. The hand can rotate and is hinged. Torso is a solid piece. There is no way swivel. Legs do the splits and they look hideous when you do that. It just completely ruins the sculpt. Now, in addition to the legs coming out and going forward, they go forward up here a little bit differently. You can kind of see that joint going up and down there. Legs go forward about that much and back not much at all. She does, I guess, no, I'm mistaken, no thigh cut. Single jointed knee, goes back less than 90 degrees, no rotation. She's got a boot cut and then her ankle here, it like goes forward and back just the tiniest little bit. And then the tilt rock is so weird the way that they design that. I mean, something up here goes forward and back, and it barely does at all. They have this completely separate, really weird piece. I've never seen a figure designed that way. It just seems very inefficient. So, she's small, she's brittle, articulation sucks. Now, I will say in her defense, I'm not really worried about any of this. It feels a lot better than the original. I can move her around with ease, with at least what little you can move around. So the quality seems better on this one than the original. Here's Batgirl in the Batcave with the Bat family behind her. We have Batman and Nightwing using the Bat computer, Alfred bringing refreshments, and then Tim sneaking a snack. And here's a look at Batgirl on a rooftop of Gotham with the rest of the Bat family from the new Batman Adventures. Nightwing, Batman, Robin, and Batgirl. Here's a look at Batgirl on a rooftop of Gotham City, battering at hand, ready to go. Now stick around, next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other DC Direct, Batman the Animated Series figures. Here's this McFarlane re-release of the new Batman Adventures Batgirl, next to the original version by DC Direct from nearly 10 years ago. And here she is, next to the DC Direct Batman the Animated Series Batgirl. Now I much prefer this look to her. I mean, just look at her head, her whole body, the proportions are so much better. I don't even like her outfit better. Here she is, next to the Bat family from the new Batman Adventures, Nightwing, Batgirl, Batman, and Robin. Then, next to the Bat family from Batman the Animated Series, Robin, Batman, and Batgirl. Here's Batgirl, next to the rest of her wave. This is based off the new Batman Adventures. We have Batman, Batgirl, Killer Croc and Baby Doll, and then Two-Face. Now there's a Platinum Chase variant of Batgirl. I'm on the hunt for a couple of those. If anybody has a lead on where I'm happy to get one, drop me a line in the comments below. Besides her wave, the most recent McFarlane DC Direct animated re-release was Alfred. He was a single figure without a traditional wave and a Target exclusive. And here she is, next to the previous Target exclusive DC Direct animated wave. We have Mr. Freeze, Robin, Batman, Condiment King, and then both versions of Scarecrow. Condiment King was the Build-A-Figure. These guys are cell shaded and a Target exclusive. Now the next Target exclusive wave with Lockup should be dropping any day now. Really look forward to him. Before that, McFarlane released the Laughing Fish 4-pack. These guys were cell shaded based off Batman the Animated Series. They were a Walmart exclusive, and I complained about Batgirl being hard to stand. That Harley Quinn is every bit as bad and probably worse. And here are McFarlane's first DC Direct animated offerings. We have three different figures here. They're all cell shaded, and they're all from different incarnations of Batman the Animated Series. Batman from the new Batman Adventures, Catwoman from Batman the Animated Series, and the Batman Who Laughs from Batman the Adventures Continue. Here she is, with a Mafex, the new Batman Adventures Batman. Here's a look at all the Batman villains, Batman the Animated Sears style. These are done with DC Direct, gonna add Condiment King to this mix. And here's a look at all the different animated villains, the new Batman Adventure style. Different style, same universe, they all look fantastic next to each other. Now let's talk her out, next to some action figures from different various companies. So we can see how she fits in, both scale and style-wise. In case you want to know which one you can mix her with. Since she's a DC Direct animated figure, they're typically the 6-inch scale, although she's considerably shorter than that. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the smaller action figure lines I collect. They work way larger, and I'm going to include as many Batgirl figures as I can during these comparisons. Here she is, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures, and some SH Figure Arts action figures. And now, 
with some Hasbro Marvel Legends and some Mafex figures. Here's Batgirl, next to a microwavable baked potato. And here she is, next to some Mattel and Mezco DC figures. Then, with some Chaswares and Mattel wrestling figures. And now, with some NECA and DC Direct figures. Next, with some DST or Diamond Select toys and some Jack specific wrestling figures. And finally, with some McFarlane DC Multiverse Batgirl figures. So overall, this is an okay Batgirl figure. There's so many things I don't like about her. I much prefer the Batman the Animated Series design to the new Batman Adventures design. Her head is just way too big for that tiny, tiny body. Her limbs are so little, spaghetti legs and arms. Now, the plastic does feel better on the new one than the old one, but I still don't feel that good about the elbows and the knees. I think if you push them too hard, you're going to have some problems. She's really, really hard to stand up. Her accessories, she's got a whole bunch of hands, more than you'll ever need. Batarang's cool, grapnel launcher, useless. I don't know why they would include something so dumb. If I to rate this figure, I think I'm going to give her like a 4 out of 10, maybe 4.5, just because it's a little better than the old one, but I really don't enjoy this figure. I don't enjoy those super, super small feet. I don't enjoy how short she is. Yes, it's a 6 inch scale figure, but she's like 5 inches tall, and she is less than 6 feet tall, so it makes sense, but she's like true 112 scale, which is always super, super little. Overall, this one is a little bit better than the last one, as the last one is broken in two different places for me but I still just don't really like the figure. It doesn't translate well to plastic, and as far as action figures go, I think she sucks. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.